Is homosexuality sin, oral or anal sex between men? Anybody recognize this person? Yeah. This is, maybe helps, Caster Semenya. She is the woman who is South African athlete who won gold medal at the world track competition. And her medals have been taken from her because they found she had a condition called androgen insensitivity syndrome. Androgen insensitivity syndrome, very fascinating syndrome, formerly called testicular fe feminization. You see, males chromosomally, X chromosome and Y chromosome, females chromosomally, two X chromosomes. Now, the Y chromosome codes for the testes, and the, uh, and the testicles produce both testosterone and a hormone called anti-mullerian hormone. Interestingly enough, though, the receptor that recognizes testosterone is coded on the X chromosome. Now, this particular condition is a condition in which the mom donates the X chromosome, dad donates the Y chromosome, uh, the embryo is forming, they form testes, testes are producing anti-malarian hormone and testosterone, but there are no receptors to recognize testosterone. Now, why is that important? Anti-malarian hormone... Um, Anti-malarian hormone prevents the uterus from de and the upper two-thirds of the vagina from ever developing. So this individual has anti-malarian horm hormone, no vagina, no uterus, no fallopian tubes. But without testosterone receptors, there's no receptors in the body, so the labia do not transform into the scrotum and the clitoris does not transform into the penis based on the influences of testosterone that is circulating, but there's no receptors. And so this XY chromosomal male is born a healthy baby female. All governments of the world recognize the rights of these ASI women, XY, to marry men. Now, who sinned? Who sinned that this man was born blind, they asked Jesus. Jesus answered, neither. This man was, this, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happens so the work of God might be displayed in him. Who sinned that this person was born with a sexual defect? All creation groans over the way to sin, the Bible tells us. The whole human race, the whole world has is, is got uh, biological defects because of sin. This is what's called intersex. These are all the biological conditions that alter someone's sexual identity. I want to tell you about Swire syndrome. Swire syndrome, these kids, these are an XY, XY chromosomal um, embryo is developing, but they have true gonadal uh, dysgenesis. In other words, they don't have gonads at all. The testes never form in any form or fashion. And so what that means is there's no testosterone and there's no anti-malarian hormone, which means that these XY little babies form with full vaginas, uteruses, and fallopian tubes. Born healthy little baby girls, but no ovaries. So they're sterile. Um, but they have all the reproductive organs of a woman except the ovaries. There have been at least four documented cases now where through embryo, embryo donation, implantation, there have been four, at least four healthy babies born to these XY men that are actually get female birth certificates. And they're actually women, but women with an X and a Y. All of these different conditions are some type of, some type of um, sexual intersex between male and female. Mosaicism, mosaicism is when you have two different cell lines in the same human being. So in the same person, you will have some of the cells of the body with XX, some of the cells of the body with XY, or XXY, XX, or XXXY, XX, you will have in the same person, different cell lines in the same person. Um, one, of this, one of these types of mosaicism is called a chimer. And a chimer is when, uh, say, fraternal twins, you have two ovums and you have two sperms fertilized. So you have fraternal, fraternal twins forming, and those fraternal twins will fuse and become one person. And so that person then is born as an individual, but they're actually two different cell lines. Now, a case happened in... A case happened in um, Colorado of a woman who was living with a man, had three children, and uh, they weren't married. They separated, and she f filed in, in court for child support. The court ordered paternity testing, and with paternity testing of the dad, and they also test mom. The, the paternity test came back 99.99% mom's kid, uh, dad, excuse me, dad's kids, 99.99% not the woman who was filing for this stuff. So the court, the district attorney arrests her, going to file her for, uh, um, going to fine her for all types of fraud. That she's in court crying, pleading. These are my kids. Got all these pictures of them growing up and everything. So that she happened to be pregnant with her fourth child. So the judge postponed a finding and, and ordered a representative of the court to be in the labor room as this next child came out of her body. And this next child came out of her body, took samples from the woman, samples from the kid, and it came back 99.99% not hers.
Now the DA is going to prosecute her for embryo stealing, accusing her of going to some embryo place and stealing embryos and doing implantation to, to do something of a fraud. And some uh, professor at Harvard University heard about it, flew out, tested her. She is a chimer. She and her fraternal sister. So she is, is her blood, but her reproductive organs were her sisters, who they fuse into one. So this type of strange and bizarre things. Now, I, I say all this because... Oh, and according to the, North, um, uh, the Intersex Society of North America, um, those having one of the conditions listed on the previous page, 1% of live births exhibit some degree of sexual ambiguity, and 0.1% and 2% of live births have so much ambiguity that they require medical intervention or surgical intervention. So that would be one to two people out of every thousand people. So what determines male and female? What determines male and female? Yeah, think about this question, and we think about sin. There's a difference between sin and, and, and what sin has done. For instance, there are people born sterile. That is a consequence of sin. It's not part of God's design. It's a deviation from God's design. God designed them to be fertile, to be fruitful and multiply. But is being born sterile a sin? No, it's a consequence of sin. And we have to distinguish what sin has done from what sin actually is. And so what determines male and female? Do the chromosomes determine male and female? I mean, you guys tell me, does genitalia determine male and female? Does mental orientation, identity, individuality? Does behavior? You guys tell me, what determines male and female? What does it mean? It means that all these defects are a result of sin damaging this creation, but does that mean they're all active sin? Man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. It's not our place to judge others. We don't know their circumstances. It's our job as Christians to love a homosexual like Christ loved the prostitute. And bring that person to Christ, and in a relationship with Christ, as he renews their heart, any change in behavior will happen as the heart gets renewed to be like Christ. Any inappropriate behaviors that need to change, Christ will change those behaviors. It's not our job to convict a sinner, change other people. Is that right?